I have a book here that is a very, very important book, remarkably written, by Mark Stein. Many of you know who he is. I think all of you know who he is. After America, get ready for Armageddon. How are you, Mark? Hey, I'm doing great, Mark. How are you? Well, it is a pl- have we ever talked before? Yeah, we. I was uh, I was on your show a oh, yes, couple, yes. Of, couple of years ago. That's uh, when. So uh, every couple of years. Yeah, that's right. Uh, when the last book <laughs> came out, I think. <laughs> well, we got we have to do it more often than that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but th- this is a. How long did it take you to write this book? Well, it, it was one of those things that just sort of percolated uh, in in my mind. I was, and it was at one point when I was looking at. Yeah, some of these like congressional budget office graphs they put out looking at what uh, <clears throat> you know debt ratios are going to be in 2050 and 2070 and 2090 and it suddenly occurred to me like this is all junk you know this stuff is happening now there isn't going to be a 2070 if we if we just stick on this trend line uh, and that's that's when the the whole urgency of the issue just kind of swam into focus for me well let me start kind of from the back end and move and move and move forward here. What do you? Uh, what is your prognosis for this country? Well, I think we the the risk is that uh, America is we we stand on the brink of a uh, transfer of power from one dominant nation not to another successor nation, as happened in uh, after the Second World War when Britain ceded global dominance to America. Uh, but to an entirely different scenario where China is the dominant economic power but is not the world's order maker, is not a democracy, is not committed to stability in the world, uh, where America uh, does not enjoy the genteel decline that post-war Europe did where it was cushioned by the American security umbrella but instead descends in, into a, a far more violent and impoverished kind of chaos And we find ourselves in a post-American world. And people who think that sounds great, as I would imagine a lot of, you know, a lot of Swedes and a lot of Belgians might think it might sound great in theory, will discover that in practice it's a nasty and violent place uh, that is sicker, that is poorer, uh, that on every measurement is worse than the American tranquility and prosperity that the world has enjoyed since 1945. I'm talking to Mark Stein. The book is After America, Get Ready for Armageddon. And we've linked to it on marklevinshow.com on my social site. You can go to amazon.com. Now, Mark, um, not as you write in here, it's not really one event that precipitated all of this, but what, what would you point to as a series of events that has brought us to this point? Well, I think over the course of the uh, 20th century, the nature of the American Republic uh, changed. Um, and that we had, uh, beginning with FDR and then again with LBJ, and then remorselessly, even during a period of largely Republican government, we had a growth in the national government, because I don't think it's really federal anymore in any meaningful sense. I mean, when the when, when, when Washington in Obamacare is imposing a national tanning salon tax from Maine to Hawaii, I mean, the need for a, a tanning salon is very different in northern Maine from what it is in Hawaii. Why is that a national matter at all? Uh, so when you, when you have this abs- absurd, deranged growth in national government, the least accountable level of government, uh, it puts America at risk in a way that Iceland or Portugal or Greece or Ireland isn't because because simply because the numbers we're talking about are so much huge i mean when you're talking about a 4 trillion dollar budget in washington uh, it's not just a question of whether America can afford that, but about whether the entire planet can afford that. Even even if you say it doesn't matter, we'll get the Chinese to pay for it, or we'll get the Japanese or the Saudis or whoever to pay for it. It's not clear that on this level of spending whether even the foreigners have the money to bankroll this thing. Which raises the question, is this what the American people want? Well, I think that's I think that's the great imponderable. Uh, I, I I dust off uh, Lincoln's House Divided uh, thing uh, midway through the book, and in fact use a Canadian example as well, where they often talk about the two solitudes, English and French Canada. You know, they inhabit the real the, the same real estate, but they don't share the same psychology. And I think that's what a, a, a lot of you know the argument in America is 
uh, not a division on class lines or ethnic lines or racial lines. It's a division about the nature of the state itself, which is always, uh, I think, the, 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 the most uh, profound difference. Because if you don't even agree on what kind of country, uh, on, on, the, on the nature of, of the republic to which you belong, it's hard to argue that it's in your interest to go on sharing that space indefinitely. And I think that's, I think there's a huge divide between people who would just like to be left alone by government to go out to, to, to work and improve their lives through hard work. Uh, and then other people, I think, who have gotten, particularly since LBJ, have gotten used to like multi-generational dependency and, and the expectation that uh, government programs can somehow solve every problem in life. And I think that's, I think it's an open question in a, a 5149 America, which one comes out on top in that? You know, which kind of drives me crazy when people say, can't we work together? Work together toward what? It right, seems right. to me we have to beat the other guys, right? Yeah, I think this is, I think this is one of those issues where one side has to win and one side has to lose. Uh, and that's why when, when I look at the so-called grand bargains and the negotiate, this absurd theater over the last month in Washington, culminating today with the announcement that on the so-called congressional super committee, Harry Reid had appointed John Kerry to serve as his viceroy on this grand <laughs> super committee, uh, that, that tells you the, the kind of nonsense that is likely to emerge from, from any kind of compromise. Uh, one side has to win and one side has to lose. And I hope it's the side uh, that, that believes in small government and, and believes in affordable government. Because if it's the side that uh, wants to spend $4 trillion a year, $2 trillion of which is bor uh, borrowed, it's going to lead to the collapse of America. And when America goes over Niagara Falls, it's going to drag everybody else down with it. And that's what's at stake here. I'll tell you what's fascinating about your book, what, in, in my humble opinion. What's fascinating about your book is it is a mix of history and economics and current events and government. In other words, you bring together all these, these uh, areas of life and thinking and philosophy Right. In order to make what is an overwhelmingly compelling case, I mean, I mean, it really, it is, it really is. Look, people who listen to this show already know what I think, and I, I'm with you. I'm worried about this too, and I think we are at Armageddon. I really do. But what do you say to people who say, "What's the problem? What are you all worked up about?" I, yeah, I think that's one of the most difficult uh, arguments to make because people assume that the very rare peace and prosperity uh, that they've enjoyed for most of living memory now is, is, the nor is as, as routine a part of life as the uh, earth and sky and the waters and the mountains and the trees, that it's just a permanent feature of life. And I find, I mean, the, the cover of the book shows uh, Uncle Sam with a, a toe tag in the morgue. And I, I was a bit kind of squeamish as to whether that was a bit too controversial or whatever. And then I thought about it, and I remembered uh, Britain used to have icons. In the 19th century, there was a guy called John Bull, who was like Uncle Sam. He had a Union Jack waistcoat, and he bestrode the world like a colossus in cartoons in Punch at the zenith of the British Empire. And when nations die, icons die. And, and uh, John Bull, 95% um, of school kids, not just the morons riding in the streets in London at the moment, 95% of British school kids would never have heard of him. He's in the morgue. He's already toe-tagged in the locker. Uh, and I don't want Uncle Sam uh, being lined up for, for the locker next to him. And that is really what is at stake. Uh, what, what the government class in Washington is doing is an existential threat uh, to this nation as it's existed of these last two and a third centuries. Well, let me ask you this. And the book is uh, After America, Get Ready for Armageddon. And you can get it on Amazon.com and on my website, MarkLevinShow.com, and my social sites. Mark Stein, let me ask you this question. What do you think motivates people like Obama and, and that ilk? What, what do you think they're up to? Well, I think he has a... a uh, a co the classic condescending faculty lounge view of the world. You have to, what I think is the difference when you were talking about the divide in America is I think most conservatives, uh, 
exist in a kind of oppositional world. They know every time they go and see a Hollywood movie, every time they switch on a sitcom and hear a certain kind of cheap joke, uh, every time they happen to be uh, stuck at the airport and they're watching some drone on CNN, they understand the other guy's point of view. They're exposed to it relentlessly. When you look at a guy like Obama, he comes, uh, the, the, the particular uh, uh, district he lived, he lived in in Chicago, basically all his adult life, voted something like 95% Democrat. He doesn't know there's another world out there. And all the people that he's appointed, they all think the same way. I mean, uh, what, what is depressing about the, the, the so-called ruling class in America is that the, is the wretched conformity uh, of its atti- of its attitudes and 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 when you, you see this man make a fool of himself in front of the world as he did yesterday when he stands up and he announces that the solution to America's debt problems is to ask the so-called rich to pay their fair share you realize that this guy this guy uh, uh, belongs to a class that is just uh, that is just used to spending its whole life sitting around thinking big thoughts, but doesn't actually create a dime of wealth, doesn't produce a dime of wealth, doesn't know what it means like to hire people. You said this yourself. I remember one time a couple of years ago driving up along the Taconic uh, State Parkway out of New York, uh, or whatever it's called, listening to you, and, and you, were, you, were, you were talking about this, you know, the rich have to pay their fair share, and you said, I pay enough, and I agree with you. I pay enough, too. Why are we the bad guys? We employ people. Uh, we, we have, in our, in our modest way, we create wealth, we create jobs, we contribute to the Treasury. Why should we take lessons in Barney, from Barney Frank and Barack Obama and Timothy Geithner, guys who've never created a dime of wealth for this economy in their lives? Why should we take lessons from them? Uh, in, uh, and why should we allow ourselves to be painted as the bad guys? It's ridiculous. You know, I'm going to tell you something. This this book, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just telling you this. You you hear Mark Stein. You know how persuasive he is. You hear him on Russia's show on Fox, on my buddy Hugh Hewitt's show. You're probably everywhere else. I just can't listen to everything. <laughs> and uh, but there's a reason why you're admired so. And it's not just what you say; it's how you say it. And this book, ladies and gentlemen, is absolutely fascinating. I'm going to have to take a little break, Mark. If you can hold on, is that okay? Oh yeah, I'd love to. I'm on with Mark Stein. The book is After America. Get ready for Armageddon. You can get it at Amazon.com, MarkLevinShow.com, if I can get over this cold, and my uh, social site. So, Mark Stein, um, here's my big question for you. What do we do after the collapse? Well, after the collapse, I think you're talking about uh, really ugly scenarios. I mean, I think you're talking about uh, where we'd be looking at secession. We'd be looking at in a post-prosperity America that has imported tens of millions of low-skilled immigrants from Latin America for whom there would be no work. You would ha- you already have extraordinary uh, high levels of uh, unemployment uh, in many parts of the country. I mean, you, w- you would be looking at uh, civil breakdown. You would be looking at uh, situations like we see in, in London at the moment, only much worse, because I think the police uh, would basically uh, the law-, law enforcement would decide this is the green zone and if your particular residential Street happens to be outside what uh, what the green zone is. It's not going to be it's not going to be pleasant at all. I mean, I don't think the idea that America can decline in the way that say post Habsburg Vienna <laughs> declined uh, is is uh, is on the cards, and that's why. Uh, it's much better to, to actually take a stand and roll this thing back. I'm always, I'm always struck when you meet so-called moderate Republicans, and they'll say about this or that issue, oh, this isn't a hill to die on, that isn't a hill to die on, this one isn't a hill to die on, oh, and that one's not a hill to die on either. And by the time, you, uh, by the time you've had this conversation, you're already like 15 hills further back from where you were. <laughs> at some point, at some, I, I'd much rather take, I'd, I take the view that we've, we've conceded far too much much turf already. We conceded the grade schools, which has been a disaster. The idea that you can put people in, expose people to, to social engineering of the worst kind for 13 years and that it has no consequence when they turn let up me, in the voting booth. Let me hold you right there. We'll come back for one more segment with Mark Stein. We'll be right back.
Mark Stein, the book is After America. Get ready for Armageddon. He's on with my buddy Hannity tonight on the Fox News Channel, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So, Mark Stein, we only have a couple minutes left. What do you want people to get out of this book? I want, I want them to get out uh, of it mainly the, the sense of urgency, uh, to, to not to believe, like, the time frame of this uh, absurd theater we watch in Washington, where you, you plan to slow the rate of growth by the year 2020, because uh, there isn't going to be a 2020, not for America, if, if, we, if we go down that path. Uh, by 2020, we will be depending on the rest of the planet sinking, being willing to sink 20% of its GDP into U.S. Treasury debt to fund the federal government. That is never going to happen. And there's no point pretending. I mean, they can have their committees and commissions and pretend it will, but it's precisely for that reason that the rest of us have to get serious and start uh, rolling back this stuff, rolling back the spending, stopping it right now. Fiscal year now. Fiscal year this week. Fiscal year this minute. Not uh, meaningless stuff for 2020, 2030, 2040. You know what? That's invigorating. You know, people are, well, you're negative. No, you're not. You're a realist. What you're saying is invigorating. You're telling people, now's the time. This is our history, yep, right? Yeah. Now. And it's the, same, it's the same distinction, by the way, that you, you made in Liberty and Tyranny. It's about, it's about statism. And that is, that is uh, the issue. It's the status and the rest of us. And big government means small everything else. Big government means small liberties. It means small space. It means small economy. Big government means everything else is shrunken and shriveled. And, and, and that's the space it crowds out, and that's why it has to be driven back continuously. Well, I think this book will encourage people, push people, to act. And by act, I mean elect the right people and stand up to these bureaucrats and stand up to even people in the media. The book is After America, Get Ready for Armageddon by Mark Stein. Mark Stein, it's been a great honor, my friend. It's, it's been an honor to be on this show, too, Mark. You are one of the most uh, important voices uh, when it comes to... Uh, to, 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 to taking a stand for, for the American idea.